welcome to this edition of Tales from the Bargain Bin. I don't know what number it is, because I don't know how I'm going to release these things. So we'll just say it's number something. Thank you so much for checking out the show. With me once again is my brother, Mr. Bobby Tucker. How are you, sir? Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. This is, uh, this is fun we do these together, because these games... They're joint recollections, you know, because when we do them, it's stuff that we had as kids that we didn't quite expect. If you're new to the show, um, this is a podcast where we talk about those random gifts we received from well-meaning family members who didn't get the Santa list. They kind of just went to the went to uh, the Walmart or in our case, Caldor or <laughs> Bradley's, and they just kind of went rogue and picked whatever they wanted. Some of those games are great. Some of those games are kind of hidden gems, and some are terrible. And tonight, we talk about maybe the latter. I'm not going to speak for Bobby, but uh, Barbie, <laughs> uh, developed by High Tech in- Thai Tech Expressions in 1991. Bobby, this was a game my sister received, or your sister, obviously, both our mm. sisters, yes. <laughs> um, received by our sister, Lindsay, as a... Christmas gift, I think, probably from my Aunt Nancy. That's that's the guess I'm going to make. Yeah, I think Lindsay wanted this. We should probably have asked her. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I thought about it. This I thought about today. Like, huh, I should t- I should text Lindsay and see where she where this game came from. I, I did like not she, do that. I feel like she wanted it, and she got it for either a Christmas or a birthday. Uh, but it was, you know, I think she wanted it. It wasn't like a surprise gift. Really, I seem to remember her kind of getting it and being somewhat excited, and then saying, "I I don't know what to do with this thing. Yeah. Like, can you play it for me?" Yeah, <laughs> okay, that, that might have been it. You're right. Yeah, yeah. She, she, she. I remember her saying, "Can you play this for me?" Yeah, yeah. So of course, as a loving brother, we we obliged. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about you, Bobby, but I played a lot of this <laughs> uh, <laughs> because it was like extra game that year. It, it was a new game. And what, why not? <laughs> why not? It's a game. It works like a game. <laughs> it does. It plugs in. It makes noises. Has a terrible uh, loading screen. Or I remember screen. it being a perfectly good, like, because it's not a long game. And I remember it being a pretty good, like, if you got, like, a half hour or so to kill, I don't know, before going out to dinner or whatever yeah. you had planned on the weekend. Like, it was a good way to knock out an hour. <laughs> you could actually yes. kind of beat the game pretty fast, I think. Yeah, you can blow through it in about 30, 40 minutes. Wow. Um, I, I played it today <laughs> for about a half an hour. Excuse yeah. me. And I got to the last level, yeah. which is a hateful abomination. But we'll get we'll get to that <laughs> disaster, what that thing is. Um, but I think my, my overall impressions, this is not – this was made competently. <laughs> this is a competently made game. This is not – it's a bad game, I think. I mean, if you mm-hmm, looked at mm-hmm. it objectively, there's lots of bad here and poor decisions and choices. But it has, there was some thought put into it. It's mm-hmm. not a complete cash grab on the Barbie name or brand. This is a – it's a competently made game. What do you remember of this title, Mr. Tucker? <laughs> um, I remember – um a pretty interesting premise because they all take place in her dreams <laughs> right um she's got so much to do the next day she must go to sleep and uh i remember like but then every time she goes to sleep she has anxiety dreams <laughs> of bizarre <laughs> proportions <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> and um and i remember what was unique about it, because you were so used to playing Mario and like jumping on enemies and stuff. I don't think you can jump or even kill an enemy, any enemies in this game. It's, I guess they were trying to market it towards young girls. And uh, really, you just have to jump over obstacles. And But you have to use um, coins, if I'm not mistaken, or you throw little dots. <laughs> and... Um, they make and you can do uh, specific tasks with them to solve puzzles. Um, so it's kind of it had a clever workaround, like the usual, um, you know, s- side scroller. Um, right. But it's but it's so Barbie's a very long and tall woman. Um, <laughs> yes. Completely, yes. I don't think any woman quite looks or her proportions are very very unrealistic. Yes. Uh, I, yeah. Uh, her length and everything. And so in the game that translates beautifully because she's very stiff 
And I remember <laughs> jumping and just like kind of like your head hits the wall and stuff. <laughs> so she's kind of awkward to move, as is a real Barbie. So I think they nailed that actually. <laughs> they yeah, she 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 moves as if she has like a steel rod in her back. Yes. So she's constantly <laughs> upright with her head at perfect posture. Yeah. So I guess that's how Barbie is, because I guess that's how girls are supposed to be. I guess I don't yeah. know. The aspiration doll, I guess. I, I, an aspiration. <laughs> <laughs> an aspiration doll. It's it's a very strange. You're right because she's very stiff, and your main verb is jump. And like you said, you throw these little charms. That's the best way I can describe the them. charms, right? Because right. it's on a little charm bracelet in the lower menu. And the way it works is is that you have three different charms. You have a stop charm, a go charm, and a question mark charm. Which mm-hmm. hey, surprise! And using those charms. You can make little NPCs in the environment do things to clear your way, or you can use them during boss battles to, you know, defeat the various bosses that are in these levels. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like Boy in His Blob. It's yes. got that feel to it, as does the throwing of the charm. If I remember correctly, you kind of have to time in Boy of Boy in His Blob, time the way you throw it in a certain way, hold the button a certain amount of time, have a certain amount of momentum. Uh, that's how this kind of works. Mm-hmm. Although Barbie. boy in his blob is beans, I think. But right, it's yeah. yeah you, you throw beans to your adorable little blob, and you have <laughs> like twenty of them or something. You have a lot of different options to choose from. Yeah, here you have three. Yeah, this is a little, <laughs> but, this is a little more yeah dialed back. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. The game itself is extremely simplistic. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not much to anything. Uh, platforming is a bit of a disaster it really does require (laughs) for the most part like pixel perfect you know edge of the ledge style uh platforming Mm -hmm. um but then you can't get enough momentum to move forward every time you hit the jump button it makes it goes bling 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 get used to that sound i think i'll put it right here (laughs) oh no (laughs) yeah there it is (laughs) i will i will there it is and yeah it's just a really really um it's not terrible until it's terrible. And then when it gets terrible, it's incomprehensible and inexcusable. <laughs> uh, um, does it get hard? To, like, does, it, does the difficulty ever get hard? Because I don't remember. Yes, it gets hard at the very last level. So the first level, I'll go through them very fast. No one really cares that much. The first <laughs> one, you're, you're in a mall. And you're being assailed by kind of like uh, Bart Simpson versus the Space Mutants. Mm. The second level where you're attacked by shoes and gloves and yeah. hats. The mall. <laughs> and the mall section. Yeah. Same thing here. You're being uh, attacked by, again, shoes and gloves and all sorts of other things kind of rolling around the environment. They're silly and ridiculous. Um, again, you can throw your charms to have your little animal friends help you clear ways and clear out obstacles. Um, it's a very silly game. Uh, water hurts. That's great. It's one of those games <laughs> where the water fountains evidently cause you distress. Yeah. Your life meter, which is actually pretty neat, it, are Z's. It's snoozing. So your life meter is how much sleep, how well you're sleeping. It's kind of like Nightmare night, nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> <laughs> like if you get woken up, it's game over. I guess yes. it's the opposite. Um, <laughs> it's the opposite of Nightmare on Elm Street. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty weird, but it's a pretty neat concept. Um if you basically have three chances to get through the entire game or else you start over. It's basically three lives and it's over. That's lame. That sucks. <laughs> uh you also receive um pickups for uh invincibility. You get a pickup for a shield. If you remember that, Bobby, it's like this rotating little bubble shield. I do remember that. That thing is ridiculously overpowered, and you can just walk (laughs) through the level unimpeded. (laughs) Some of these levels are pretty short. They're all actually pretty short. Uh, So the first level is small. The second one, you play as a mermaid. And the mermaid is... It's fine as a swimming game goes. Uh But again, super straightforward, super easy. Um, And actually, at the end of each main world you acquire a new piece of an outfit because the idea behind the game is in your dream you are building your dream gown Uh to meet your dream ken you have a dream ending which evidently is pretty sad for barbie because this is all a dream anyway so (laughs) no stakes (laughs) um and these do sound like a nightmare for barbie like if water hurts you i mean that makes sense you know 
I, Bar- you know, Barbie yeah. works very hard, you know, when she steps out on the town. That's right. Well, <laughs> water can go a long way, man. It's no fun. It, it takes her a hot minute to get her face on. I yeah, understand that's right. that. That's fair. Um, so on the boss, about. <laughs> the, the bosses of, I was talking about horror shows. You know, you can't go to the food court without the pizza oven. Uh, attacking you that's one uh, of the bosses a pizza oven that flings your pizzas and then you have a a, a formless mannequin that's just like a hat and a blouse and and uh fl- like a ghost if as mm. if a ghost were wearing <laughs> you know a, a fancy outfit yeah that's no fun yeah and then um a giant stack of inflatable balls that come at you and the idea is you have to feed your little doggy friend to to shut the door on them right. again this is all for it's for girls it's for young girls and i say that i say that um, I say that uh, dismissively, mm-hmm. not because I'm saying that small girls can't enjoy regular games. That's just kind of what the mentality of the time was. We're saying from, this is for girls. We're saying it from a 1991 lens, yeah. um, marketing lens, and that's yeah, that's how they they designed it. Although the key demographic is uh, for Barbie, most likely girls. Uh, doesn't mean right. girls can't play Mario, and as they do, <laughs> um, as they do, and and people on this show have uh, proven that uh, yeah. a number of times. So, so actually, I mean, like that's the only that's well, one of the big strikes against this game. I guess you would say is um, they could have made the game harder. They could have given girls a you know a little more credit <laughs> and made yeah. it made a proper game, but I don't think they ever really did. Uh, you know, uh, Barbie's all about the accessories. It's a doll. It's it's the it's the dollhouse and all that stuff. I mean, the the best uh, equivalent today of having that kind of experience in a video game is like Sim Life. You have your right. Sim, and then you build your house and you build your dream life. And that's kind of what Barbie dolls were for the '90s. And uh, I don't know to turn that into like a side-scrolling game. It's just. I guess they did their best, but <clears throat> there's no excuse for not at least making it a little harder. Yeah, <laughs> or at least having that, a difficulty yeah. mode. You know? No, I agree with that. And it's I, I, there's no real again. There's no real puzzle. This it's just uh, uh, come across an obstacle. There's clearly one solution to said obstacle. Feed your little, you know, bird friend or whatever <laughs> it is the, the little charm it needs, and it flops up and down. And again, this is intended for young kids, if nothing else. <laughs> Right. And it's it's definitely has that steez. Uh, the third area after and again at the end of the mall, I think you get the dress. I think that's what you either dress or the shoes. Mm. The idea is you throw whatever things you've collected into a fountain, and I think you get shoes. I can't remember, but maybe <laughs> shoes. Um, at the at the end of the second one, you get a shiny pearl. Um, I will say the mermaid section because again each world has different sections in it, like you'd expect. The last section of the mermaid is horrendous. It is. is, (laughs) This is, I think, where most people probably just fell apart. Um, There's a a circling tornado figure that will push your character forward and back like a current. So you're constantly fighting an alternate current or an alternating current Mm -hmm. to to move forward. Mm -hmm. And it is freaking annoying my gosh it is annoying it's horrendous it's one of those weird difficulty spikes because the balance of the mermaid section is not that bad okay yeah well there you go and then they found a place to put some difficulty (laughs) they sure did Uh, it's just a very bad badly designed um section then level three gets back to the easy stuff that is you're at a 50s diner Mm. i guess as a 50s a 50s gal so all sorts of you know fifties era like records and again sentient uh, inanimate objects trying to <laughs> cause you to. There's some really cute and adorable though uh, NPCs and enemies in here. Uh-huh. Actually, they're NPCs. There's all these little like hamburgers and sodas uh-huh. and 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 uh, ice cream cones. Yeah, I was gonna say that, if it's the fifties, I picture like malts and <laughs> and like yeah. little skirts. Yeah, it's yeah. a malt. Yeah, and it's got these little <laughs> eyes on them. The malt does. Yeah. It's super freaking cute. The again, not a, a competently made, thought out game. It really is. Yeah, it's. For example, the little malt guy will walk under – there's a soda – there's a giant soda um, mm-hmm. stream thing, you know, dispenser. <laughs> uh, that's impeding your progress because you can't get sticky soda on your outfit. Like, And let's be honest. Who would want to? Uh-huh. And now no one wants to do that. Um, so as your little guy walks forward, if you feed him a charm at the right spot, he'll kind of like uh, shoot his ice cream and stop the spray so you can walk underneath it. 
which is really the ultimate sacrifice because who knows if he can even live separated from his little container. <laughs> um, it's really super cute. Like the hamburgers, if you hit it with the right thing, it'll shoot its hamburger patty out and knock over a bunch of um, things. Super, super cute. But, um, you know, I also re- realize I'm probably murdering these adorable little sentient hamburgers <laughs> as I progress to this level. It's all right. But it's, it's all, all a dream. It's all, it's all a dream. I was going to say. <laughs> it's all Barbie a dream. has to survive her dreams <laughs> or her nightmares. I'm not sure. <laughs> so before I, uh, we, we kind of move on, the last thing I want to mention is the fourth level, uh-huh. which is the sock hop, which is, again, there's basically three pieces of garment you need to make your dream dress. Mm-hmm. Um, the third one, I believe this is for the shoes. The final area you have to traverse leans into the worst part of this game. And I mean the worst part of this game, which is the platforming. Mm -hmm. You are tasked with jumping over these tiny little music musical notes yeah some of these notes that I you remember this. yes i'm sure i am i bringing back horrible memories <laughs> pretty bad like the freaking music notes yeah, that's pretty bad <laughs> and the records that are spinning yes. so you remember, can't really remember how many stiff she is and then, then trying to jump on these little bouncy notes yes 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 do they, <laughs> do they bounce too or uh, they make you bounce or am i thinking no something? you're thinking oh. of something there are other things in that in that world that make you bounce oh. this does not make you do anything oh. you need to be pixel perfect <laughs> and have the right momentum to make it to the next Horrendous. uh platform <laughs> and if you mess up guess what you get to do go all the way to the back, back because there's this spinning conveyor belt the second you miss whoop right back to the beginning of the level and it's probably 30 easy 30 jumps you need to make perfectly to get to this final section. And that's the final section. And then the final boss is some weird thing, a jukebox. Yeah, I keep a bunch of coins spinning. I don't remember. I probably use Game Genie um, <laughs> on this. Although the Game Genie would not have helped the platforming. So No. No, I think we beat this without Game Genie. I think <laughs> I think we somehow mastered its awful controls. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, hey, listen, look at us. Look at us just killing it. Again, we had three new games that year, and one of them yeah. was Barbie. So. <laughs> yeah, so that is a hateful, hateful ending of this game. But you go to the ball at the end, right? You do. You're the bell of the ball. You descend the staircase very slowly, one step at a time. You approach your beloved Ken, you embrace, and that's that's the end. I didn't finish the game. I just saw the end of it on YouTube, so I'm not about to, like... I got to that part. I was like, oh, no. No, I know what this is. No. <laughs> it all came back to you. <laughs> oh, that mermaid stuff sounded terrible, too. <laughs> oh, it's, it's really bad. But it's worth it, as long as she makes it to the ball, you know. In her know. dreams. In her dreams, right? <laughs> <laughs> No, Which is always a weird thing in games, you know, when it's like all a dream. But but remind me, do you also like have to pick up things that spell out the name Barbie, right? You pick up. I don't believe so. Oh. I didn't notice it. There are like bees in there, like bonuses. Oh, I thought there and if was. You, yeah, I don't. I think if you pick up certain things, you'll get more more health slash sleep time. I don't think you have to pick up Barbie though. I'm thinking. I for some reason I think you're right, but I'm not. That's not clicking with me, okay. oddly. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> you played it without you... doing that element just fine. <laughs> I just ran through it as fast as humanly possible. That's it. Just got that got that little bubble shield and away it went. And that was <laughs> how we, we did it for sure. Did Lindsay have actually beat it, our sister? I don't think she ever really played it, Bobby. I think she <laughs> asked us to play it and then we were obliged. And then we went, all right. I'll play a game. <laughs> I'll play a game, whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's a new game. Uh, you mentioned this is published by High Tech Expressions, but it was, but it was also uh, developed by a, a team called Imagineering. And I remember specifically, at, like on the home screen, it said Imagineering, Glen Rock, New Jersey. <laughs> hey! I know, and I remember, remember reading that, and I'm going... Glen Rock, New Jersey. Why? <laughs> like, why is there a video game developer in Glen Rock, New Jersey? Doesn't make. I didn't think anything was in Glen Rock, New Jersey. There is an actual rock. I've seen it. It's a boulder, <laughs> but that's. I didn't know anything about a develop a development company. <laughs> and I, and I rem- just remember that being an odd little thing. They developed a couple of the um, uh, uh, Barbie games, and they've had like they go back to like the '80s a little bit with Atari and stuff. So they had a little little. I, when I looked them up, 
A uh, little, um, one of the most notable games they've had their hands in was A Boy and His Blob. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, see, I wonder where they got that mechanic. Yes, they, they did. Have, they just pulled that code right from uh, Boy and His Blob. And they said yeah. that would be great. Yeah, Boy and His Blob was 89. So just like, you know, a few years later, hey, let's. Do that again <laughs> with the Barbie doll license. I'm on, <laughs> I'm, on their sa- I'm on that page as well. It looks like they've had their fair share of frustration. They did uh, Akari Warriors. Oh. The 2600. <laughs> I didn't realize that um, was them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, they also developed uh, Bart Simpson, Bart versus the Space Mutants. Another reference earlier in this podcast. Oh, my goodness. Just, <laughs> yeah. They're, and they were the uh, developers, obviously. So yeah. they had developed um, Bart versus the Space Mutants, Bart versus the World. Yeah. They had they had the Simpsons license. So they, yeah, they, they no they kidding. <laughs> Escape from Camp Deadly on the Game Boy. Yeah. Well, you may have to do Bart versus the Space Mutants, although I suspect that's probably a game you wanted, considering your fandom. Uh, yeah. I wanted one of them. And I remember... Um, Getting that one and borrowing the other one, um, I, it was <clears throat> Bart. Uh, I think it was also a dream one, wasn't it? I'm getting off topic here, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, uh, we because oh, Bart versus the world, right? Right. Um, my friend had Bart versus the world. That one I borrowed, right? And then we got Space Mutants, and we would swap and all that stuff. <laughs> and then the one I never gotcha. played was Camp Deadly, but that was a Game Boy game, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted it, yes. I, I wasn't prepared for how hard it was. But. <laughs> no one was. But it's no just, one was prepared for it. It was just one of those like, tie-in things, because I obviously like The Simpsons, and then, um, yeah, that, that happens a lot, you know, when you have a t- when there's a tie-in property, and then the game doesn't quite match up. <laughs> uh, yeah, they also did um, 1990s 2 Bart vs. the Juggernauts, and yeah. then Bart meets uh, Bartman meets Radioactive Man. Right. And NAS. So they had the whole thing, huh? That's pretty good. And then they actually did, they were one of the 93 developers. They were making NES games in 93. Wow. That's two years <laughs> after the release of the Super Nintendo. They released the Red and Stimpy show Buckaroos. I don't remember that. For the NES. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. <laughs> no, and I, I don't want to click on it to find out. I really don't care that much. Um, and then they did a Barbie game for Game Girl. Um, game Girl, Derp. They did a Barbie Game Girl game for Game Boy. So oh, Barbie right. colon Game Girl. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm sure that is just... And, and the, the, the cover of that one is equally as generic as the one <laughs> for NES. Uh, yeah. Did I mention that the cover art for the for these games is just the doll? <laughs> it's, just, it's just a blank pink background with the doll. Like, <laughs> they did this not... This was actually... <laughs> <laughs> this was actually creepy because her face is like way too red and her eyes way too blue. <laughs> like this is something that sh- that's going to peer at me from the shadows yeah. in my dreams. Thanks, Barbie. Can you imagine I mean, like being a little girl who's like, oh, another Barbie doll. And you open it to like a video game cartridge and you're just like, oh, what is this? <laughs> is there a doll in here? <laughs> that's so good. Um, I'm looking at this very, very sparse wiki for Barbie colon game girl. And there is one tiny Sparks screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> Even the Wikipedia community couldn't muster up some some <laughs> sources for this thing. <laughs> you know it's bad when I can just count the sentences. <laughs> there is about twelve. <laughs> there about. Um, the, the factoid it has for this one: the game's title screen plays an instrumental version of the early 1990s pop music song "Gotta Make You Sweat." <laughs> Everybody Dance Now by CNC Music Factory. Great. So if you want to hear a Game Boy version of uh, Everybody Dance Now, ga- Barbie colon Game Girl is your place. It's basically the same game. I oh, The one screenshot, goodness. it's the same game just for the Game Boy. In this platform game, Barbie must find an outfit for a date with Ken. Then uh, the world's floor, game is all center, collecting gems and pearls. Uh, there is a very good caption on this image. And it reads, Barbie is inside a giant 50s diner trying to avoid a possessed, <laughs> sorry, I can't laugh, trying to avoid a possessed soft drink that is throwing french fries at her. Hey. <laughs> I gotta get through it. I was really trying to get through that sentence and I could not. <laughs> sorry, listeners. I want to oh. submit this, either one, NES or the Game Boy game to psychology today. And I want to see, like, is there dream theory <laughs> hold up in, in this game? <laughs> 
is is the is the fifties or or even like the pizza ovens like her fear of uh losing her figure is the uh uh what was the other one not the mermaid what was the other level <laughs> um well, there's mermaid there's the mall and there's a the sock hop right, right the, the mall her fear of the mall on the mm-hmm. on all these articles of clothing attacking her is that her fear of credit <laughs> card debt like i just like i just i want to i want to get a hold of like the psychology today and say could you just like do a quick article on this bobby bobby <laughs> please please stop trying to silent hill our barbie game okay please stop please stop trying to make these manifestations of her tortured psyche i don't know i mean i think it'd be kind of fun it'd be good well speaking of um speaking of uh, science and people who have kind of analyzed this game oh for a little bit yes uh in the book Bar- from Barbie to Mortal Kombat, Gender and Computer Games, mm. uh, Justine Cassell uses Barbie as an example of typical, quote-unquote, pink software. Software designed with a male audience that is merely reskinned for female gamers without regard for their different taste in gaming. Mm. Sure. Huh. Yeah. I mean, correct. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> I mean, it's obvious from the, from the packaging. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's just, like, it's, it, again, it seems it's competent. And clearly the developers were competent i mean they, they made mm-hmm. some duds you know nobody likes most of their games to be honest <laughs> i don't think we have any big swamp thing fans out there or, <laughs> or family feud in 1991 but <laughs> boy and his blob has some has some defenders and i'll defend that game to a certain extent yeah um, so I, have, I have a soft yeah. spot for that game yeah i like i like boy and his blob <laughs> Yeah, they weren't really uh, setting the world on fire, but they knew what they were doing yeah. um, for sure. And the developer, High Tech Expressions, um, or sorry, it's publisher, publisher, I should say. Yeah, yeah, publisher. They they also publish a lot of junk. Uh, nothing <laughs> of real note. There's also a Barbie super supermodel game, Barbie Supermodel. Um, it's for the Genesis. Oh. Same old generic pay front screen. Oh, sorry, same old <laughs> generic cover art. <laughs> that's what they do you get to play as just, barbie naturally just take a doll box slap the system on it <laughs> it's, they, it's as cheap as it gets man <laughs> i'm gonna go on twitter i'm gonna take all these these game boxes and i'm gonna put them up because you can put up to four pictures and post who, which one do you like best because yeah. <laughs> they're all freaking the same which one barbie play? <laughs> barbie vacation adventure same thing, just a doe-eyed Barbie staring at you uh, <laughs> behind a colorful pinkish background. <laughs> yeah, the only other game I think of note that they were involved with, uh, well, they did a Where in the World is Carmen San Diego for SNES. Oh, cool. Um, which is actually pretty good. It's fun. I yeah. like that one. It's a decent version. And then they also did Street Fighter Two for DOS. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Excellent. Cool. <laughs> Fantastic. Can't wait. Yeah, I saw cool. on their list too was uh, for the Game Boy a, a canceled uh, Baby's Day Out game. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to know about that too. <laughs> I do too. I, I would like to get a, a, a ROM of Baby's Day Out. I'm sure it'd be very much so like Barbie, kind of lots of like using your environment to get past hazards and. I want to control a baby on a construction site. It's really yes. that's all I want to do, like a Warner <laughs> Brothers cartoon. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh boy. So uh, yeah, and this is uh, to kind of put a put a fine point on it that um, I'm going to continue with Cassell and her notes here that she notes that in the design of the early 1990s Barbie video games, Mattel supervisors were only interested in the superficial visual appearances and left the game mechanics and development to third parties. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, Mattel's not going to get out there and get us get a studio together and get a development house together to make Barbie cash in. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> let's, ha- let's hire the geniuses behind Akari Warriors and make uh, them let them take care of the thing. Nobody liked that game, huh? <laughs> and I never played it. So, <laughs> wait a minute. What? I'm sorry. I must let me just put this on hold for a second. Barbie was discussed in 1992 by the United States House of Representatives. Go on. During a <laughs> continue <laughs> during a hearing chaired by the Subcommittee on Intellectual Property and Judicial Administration. Under the Committee on the Judiciary, in which it was noted that the game had been subject to frequent counterfeiting and related copyright and trademark infringements. Oh. The bulk of Barbie counterfeits were noted to have originally come from Taiwan. However, at the time, the counterfeiters were shifting operations toward Korea, Hong Kong, and China. They do good work. 
<laughs> they sure do. <laughs> As the House noted, counter- counterfeit operations that sought to infringe Barbie's intellectual property rights were large-scale and sophisticated operations working with the very latest ROM technology. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, how do you think I played this game, Senator? <laughs> <laughs> Now I say, <laughs> Mr. Tucker, where did you get this here wrong? <laughs> I don't Barbie. know what you're talking about. I my my aunt <laughs> purchased this game for my sister back in 1992 or whenever it was. It is a legally owned copy, and if I want to pirate a copy for myself, I claim ownership of the original. Damn it! You claim ownership of the original, then let's pop the old cartridge in your computer now. Where wow. is the NES port on your PC computer, Mr. Tucker? I say, I don't know, I'm just a simple small town lawyer, but I don't see no computer drive. <laughs> I'm losing it. <laughs> uh, I was just going to let you go until you, until you ran out of steam. That's, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I just, uh, well, uh, my computer port, you see, for the NES is no longer operational. However, just because I don't own a tape deck doesn't mean that the tape I purchased, that Garth Brooks tape I purchased in <laughs> 1992, isn't my property. Mm. Just because I can't play the thing doesn't mean I can't own it. <laughs> I know lots of people who own games that they never play. They don't even take them out of the box, <laughs> sir. Southern, small, small town, southern, <laughs> southern gentleman lawyer. Uh. <laughs> anyway, I, I just find it very funny that... Um, and I wonder if this is like Barbie. Yeah, no, it's Barbie the game. It's amazing that this game was cited in copyright infringement court. <laughs> wow. <laughs> From the terrible opening screen to the House of Representatives, we have mined <laughs> this Barbie game to the last. So I ask you, Mr. Tucker, do we take this home or do we put it back in the bin? Uh, it's a competent game. Yes. But your life does not improve by playing it. You could put it right back in the bin. <laughs> back in as the... much as we've kind of been on the kind side of it, it's it's not a good game. <laughs> so... No. This, this is not required playing for no, anybody no. of any age. If you have a, young kids a, at home. A morbid curiosity. If, a, a most... <laughs> <laughs> if you want to play really stiff controls. and <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to put this straight back in the bin without reservation. Yeah. Um, you know, listen, when you, I, I kind of feel for the developers on these sort of things. Mm-hmm. You, know, you get, you get an email, or I guess in that case, a letter. You get a phone call from Mattel that says, "Hey, you, hey, make my, make this Barbie game and make it a suitable for three to eight year olds, and especially girls." And you go, and we have you have three months. I can't imagine them having more than like six months to make this thing. tops. Yeah, usually. you have to have this in place for holiday in the stores, yeah. ready to roll. Don't worry, the packaging's easy. Barbie's face, <laughs> pink background, it's easy. Um, we already they, made the box for you. <laughs> they, they pull a little from this, a little from that. They make a game. It's kind of like Junior Boy and His Blob, and it is what it is. But it's not <laughs> one that deserves, in my opinion, to be. Home with me. No, <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Tales from the Bargain Bin. If you enjoy this show, then you are just the bee's knees and the cat's meow. And I appreciate you listening. Uh, be sure to check me out on Twitter at a gamer looks at forty. If you want to throw me a couple of buckaroos on Patreon, that would be lovely. Two bucks get you early access to episodes and polls and. Uh, whatever else comes with that service. Um, and you get your own private RSS feed, so you can listen to the early access shows on your pop player of choice. Pretty neato stuff. High tech indeed. And of course, check out the main show, A Gamer Looks at 40. It is good times. Uh, thanks again for checking out the show, and continue saying awesome. <laughs>